This is going to be the lecture on how to perform a simple linear regression. It uh, uses the same data set that was in the correlation video. Essentially, we have a participant ID, people's levels of social anxiety, rejection sensitivity, depressive symptoms, and disgust sensitivity. These are all measured on one to seven scales, where higher numbers indicate more of whatever the personality construct is. So more social anxiety, more sensitive to rejection, more depressive symptoms, more disgust. So um, we use linear regression, simple linear regressions, when we have one independent variable and we want to see if it successfully predicts another outcome variable, a dependent variable. So the way we'll do this is we'll go to analyze, regression, linear. There are lots of kinds of regressions. This is just for the simple linear regression we'll see we have a dependent box and an independent box. We're going to take our, in this case, let's see what predicts depressive symptoms. And we'll put that in the dependent. And then let's take rejection sensitivity and put that in the independent. This would be testing to see if one's rejection sensitivity predicts depressive symptoms. All we're going to do next is hit OK. Now we're going to have a bunch of windows that appear, a bunch of boxes. The first box lets us know what variables are being used to predict what variable. In this case, we can see that level of rejection sensitivity is being used to predict the dependent variable amount of depressive symptoms. We can next go to our model summary and our ANOVA table. The first thing we should probably look at is the ANOVA table. The ANOVA table lets us know if our model is a significant model. If the model isn't significant, nothing else matters. What it means for a model to be significant is are the predictor variables, in this case only one variable, rejection sensitivity, a good predictor, are they good predictors of the outcome variable, in this case depression, uh, depressive symptoms. We determine that by looking at the significance value of our model. In this case, our significance value is 0 0.029. This is less than alpha, 0 0.05. Therefore, the model is significant. We would report the model significance as F, parentheses 1, 16, our degrees of freedom, equals 5.759, our F value, comma P equals 0 0.029. 29, which is our p-value, our significance value. We can go back up to our model summary. We can look at our r-square. In fact, we're going to actually look at our adjusted r-square. If you multiply the adjusted r-square by 100 and interpret this as a percentage, this gives you the percentage of the variance in the dependent variable explained by the independent variable. In this case, we would say that 21.9% of all of the variability in depressive symptoms can be explained by one's level of rejection sensitivity. If we go down to the very bottom box, these are our regression coefficients. If your goal is to write the equation for the line that uses rejection sensitivity to predict depressive symptoms, we're going to look at our unstandardized coefficients. The 0 0.306 is the slope, the beta, the slope for level of rejection sensitivity. The number 1.108 that is in the constant line, that is the y-intercept, which means that the equation of the line for using rejection sensitivity to predict depressive symptoms would be y predict equals 0.306x plus 1.108. To determine whether or not the level of rejection sensitivity, that slope, is significant, we go over to the significance value and see that it is significant, the t-test comparing that slope to a slope of 0. is t2.4 with a significance value of 0.029. We can try another predictor. We can go back to regression, linear. Instead of depressive symptoms, let's use disgust sensitivity to predict depressive symptoms. If we hit OK, we again see now that disgust sensitivity is predicting depressive symptoms. We go down to our model and our ANOVA table. The ANOVA is not significant. It looks like disgust does not successfully predict depressive symptoms. 
in fact, it does a terrible job of predicting, almost none, less than none of the variance is predicting. And we can again see that the slope is very, very small, very, very close to zero. It's not different from zero. In this case, disgust sensitivity is a bad predictor of uh, depressive symptoms. That concludes the discussion on simple linear regressions.